That's it, baby. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me. And if this is the year you're thinking about doing some big bass head hunting, maybe you want to go out and break your personal best, and you're ready to put in some time and effort into this adventure, then this is the video for you. Today I'm going to be talking about what I call the in deep on the delta seasonal situational big bass head hunting plan. We'll cover everything. We're going to get into it right now. You're going to need to give me about 20 seconds to lay down some information that you're going to need to know before we get started. If after this introduction here you're still ready to go, then I will lay down a step-by-step -step plan on how you can go out and catch the biggest bass of your life. I can't guarantee that's going to happen, but the information in this video will give you everything you need to know to go out and have the best possible chance to get your new PB. Big bass don't care about your ego and they don't care about your feelings. There's not going to be any free lunches in this game. There's not going to be any advanced paycheck. There's not going to be those days where you cross your fingers and hope for luck type of success. It doesn't happen when you're hunting for trophies, believe me. Every success that you achieve will be earned from persistence, hard work, and just plain and simple time on the water. It's not going to be any driving fancy cars and kissing pretty girls. Not in this game. And last but not least, if you're the type of angler that is prone to losing confidence, this is a game that will eat you alive. Big bass hunting will be the python that grabs you in the middle of the night, pulls you down, wraps itself around you, and chokes the life out of you, and then swallows you whole. So if that sounds like fun, stay tuned. We're going to get into everything you need to know about catching your new PB. Let's do it. All right, first a big shout out to Mike Gilbert at Working Class Zero. I'm going to start off talking about qualifiers. And Mike is the first one that I heard uh, give you know use that term qualifiers, qualifiers. And these are things that you have to get ready, learn, get prepared for. Just all the things you have to do to qualify yourself for going out catching a big bass and landing a big bass. So. Remember, seasonal situational fishing. I'm not going to be talking about going out and 100% of the time fish um, uh, f for trophy fish. So there are three qualifiers for my formula when it comes to catching big bass. Number one, you have to fish in trophy waters. And if you're not fishing in trophy waters, just adjust this uh, the weights of, and the size of the fish that we're talking about to your body of water. I'm on the California Delta, you're fishing the Delta or, or Clear Lake, a lot of double digit bass coming out. Uh, you're fishing uh, Folsom, not so much. So adjust the size and the weights of the fish that we're talking about to your body of water. So you have to fish in trophy water. You have to be willing to devote a certain amount of time and energy to hunting just for big fish. And, uh, you know, that's something that a lot of people don't think about, and, and it's tough to do 100% of the time. But remember, I'm talking about seasonal situations. In my in deep on the delta seasonal situational fishing for trophy bass, you're going to have to fish after dark. So those three qualifiers, if you're not willing to do those three things, this won't work because I'll be talking primarily about fishing uh, after dark. Let's get into it. When should you be fishing? And what I'm going to do is I'll talk about the time of year you should be fishing and the tides you should be fishing and the actual time of the evening that you will need to be fishing. We'll talk about when to be on the water. We'll talk about uh, baits that I use and I am not real specific on the baits and I only use about four or five baits and techniques after dark and that is all you need. So the, the bait part of it is going to be really easy and then uh, I'll try to pull offshore and I'll talk about a couple of techniques that uh, you'll want to try after dark that you may not be trying during daylight hours. So let's start with focusing on the time of year and when you want to be on the water. To hunt for big bass I want to start basically pre-spawn uh, through the summer months. Now my after dark fishing when I can really expect to have a really good shot at some really big bass we're going to talk about post spawn and let's just say 
May, June, July, and August. Four months. That's post-spawn. Water temperatures are going to be from probably 65 to upper 70s, low 80s. Uh, that's when I want to start fishing after dark. What days do I want to fish? I want to fish full moon and no moon. I want to fish three or four days before the full moon and three or four days before no moon. Those are the two times of the month that I want to fish. What time of evening do I want to fish? I want to fish from midnight to five in the morning. What I'm going to look for is a high tide after midnight, a high outgoing tide after midnight. I'm going to try and correspond that with, let's just say I'm fishing three days before a full moon. I see that one of those days is going to have a tide, a high tide after midnight. And then I'm looking at salooner activity. If I have those three things, three days before a full moon or no moon, a high outgoing tide, the first two hours of that high outgoing tide with good salooner activity, I want to be on the water. Let's just say it, it all that corresponds at three in the morning. You may want to start fishing at, at two and stop fishing at four. Those are going to be the prime times. It's going to be a real condensed um, time when these big fish come in and start feeding. Now why do I want to fish that late, late night? Because the biggest fish, and these, this is a pattern that I've seen over the years and when I catch, when I get lucky enough to catch a big fish, it usually falls into this pattern. It doesn't come before midnight and I think it's because most of these big fish that are getting close to double digit or over double digit uh, size, they're very weary and they don't make a lot of mistakes and they're very calculated. So five, six, seven pound fish at that evening bite, you'll come in and catch a lot of those on top waters and, and, and that's a very active time to be fishing from right, uh, I'll say from 7.30 to 9.30 in the evening. The first bite period for big fish is going to be right after that feed. And, and let me get back, these fish are going to be feeding like crazy right at dark and you're going to get some really nice fish and then about nine o'clock when the sun is really starts uh, is gone and it's starting to get dark that's when the bite stops for those fish up to six seven eight pounds the huge, true monsters come out right after that for about 15 minutes the big fish are sitting out in that deep water and they don't want to compete with all the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pounders that are going crazy, um, you know, inshore, uh, feeding vigorously right at that change of light. They'll wait for that to happen. And if I am throwing a, uh, let's say, a, a buzz bait and a chatter bait and I'm doing really well and all of a sudden at dark it, it stops, that's when I pick up a big swim bait. Uh, and we're talking about a floating uh, wake bait. This is a river to sea um, tactical wake, something like that. I'll throw that for about 15 or 20 minutes. That's when you're either not going to get any bites or you're going to get a big bite because those big fish wait for all of the smaller fish to, to, to kind of get out of there and then they'll come up and try to clean up the scraps. That's what I'll do after that is, is I'll go out, I'll fish the evening, I'll be prepared to stay out all evening overnight and I bring a sleeping bag and a pillow and a, and a, and a, uh, a pad. It's comfortable out here. Remember it's the summer. Uh, we're looking at 70 degree evenings, maybe 80 degrees sometimes. Perfect time to be out here. It's safe to be out here. Um, you're gonna go come out uh, you're going to fish that evening bite, have some fun catch some fish. You're going to try to catch a big fish right after the evening bite stops. Take a break. You're going to know that there is a high tide, let's say at 3 in the morning. It's, that's after midnight. There's a lot of salooner activity. So I will try to um, grab a snack and I'll throw my bag down on the uh, bow of the boat and I'll try to get a few hours sleep. If the time uh, is right at 3 o'clock, high outgoing tide, lots of salooner activity. I'll try to wake up about two and I'll fish from about two to four. Now, that's when I'm gonna to expect to get my biggest bites. 
sometimes, uh, depending on how I'm feeling, if, if I'm up fishing at 4, I'll fish right on through to 6.30 or so, and I'll try to hit that morning bite where I could expect to catch, start catching some more uh, fish, even though they may not be as big as the fish that I catch in the evening. I'll, I'll stay right through the evening, fish till 6.30 or 7, and then I'll pack it up and go home. That's the way I do it. If you're really just focused on big fish and you know the bite's going to be out at, at 2 o'clock, you can you know, focus at fishing 2 a.m. in the morning. I, now, what are we talking about when it comes to baits? And I'm going to go over the baits real quick, and then, like I said, I'll pull up, and I'll talk about the actual areas that I like to fish. What do I fish uh, coming into, you know, that evening period? I'm throwing everything that, that everybody likes to throw right before dark. Chatter baits, uh, buzz baits, poppers, uh, frogs, you know, whatever it takes to catch fish. A lot, a lot of um, uh, walking baits like spooks. Uh, when I get up in the evening, when I'm looking at that prime time, I'm going to fish. Uh, my number one bait is going to be a big, uh, a big bait like the River to Sea uh, tactical wake bait. It's going to be a wake bait. Uh, I like Mikey's. Uh, I am not tuned in to one type of wake bait. I just want something that has a uh, probably one joint or two joints and I want it to make some noise and I want it to make some uh, some surface disturbance. Um, I have different sizes of baits and I use those uh, primarily if it's windy or I got a little bit of a chop I'll use a big bait. I like using big rats too. This is the uh, ram rat from Bob, uh, uh, Bob Mercer and it has that same knocking uh, I'll use big rats, BBZ rats are good, but if there's a lot of surface commotion, I'll use a bigger bait if it's if it's uh, just one of those no, uh, you know, full moon, n you know, no wind at all. I'll use something a little more subtle like a Mikey. I love using the Mikey out here. And if you're coming out for the first time, I highly recommend fishing the full moon. It, you're going to get enough light to where you can see things when it's dark out here. Uh, with no moon it is flat dark so your first couple trip night trips should be during a full moon you'll find that you'll catch more fish during a full moon you'll find that you catch bigger fish during the no moon so those are the wake baits that I throw and by the way I'm showing you pretty new baits that I have and I don't like people that show those this is just for a demonstration my baits that I generally use um, they're all tore up I mean they're they're bunged up they're they've got uh, Here's a guy here. Here's one that's had some problems. And why has this punker had a problem? It's because at night, every now and then, you're going to hit the rocks. Yeah, just plan on going through a few baits. So, so when I'm not fishing the big wake baits, I will throw some top waters. I like um, a big uh, a whopper plopper. And this is the big, I think it's called the 200. Uh, it's about a, well, this is nine inches here. This is a big bait. And I'll, I'll throw that. That's a good one. I try to uh, fish uh, offshore a little more often, but if there are places at high tide that I can get that I can't get a uh, open hook bait, I will throw frogs. But when I throw frogs, I throw great big frogs. This is your normal frog here. I throw big frogs, and I'll throw these into. Um, places in the tules that I like to pitch up into. I'll throw them over duckweed, things like that. It's hard to really do any precision casting at night and you don't want to get into a place where you're throwing into a lot of slop that you're constantly hung up in. So frogs will, will go through most of that. If I have open water I'll throw a big uh, double bladed buzz bait if I've got a little bit of a chop. This is a DNM that I really like. Uh, I also like Mr. B's and um, Bass Union. They're making these um, really compact double, baited, uh, double bladed buzz baits and I like these at night especially when you don't have a lot of um, a lot of chop and you need something a little more uh, subtle. This big DNM, man, this this you know it's like a motorboat coming through. So if you have no no um, uh, wind or anything, you want to use a more subtle type of buzz bait. Last but not least, I will use uh, worms, and I go with nothing but big worms. This is a 14-inch worm. I use a 12-aught hook. 
I'm going to show you exactly how I rig this and I usually use this with no um, uh, no weight on it and I usually use it when the water is very calm so I can sit in one place let this get to the bottom I like to use something with a tail on it and uh, I, I'm going to rig this weedless and I'm going to just very slowly and methodically pull this through vegetation uh, especially in areas where I may have been fishing during the day and I've seen some big fish uh, inside a trough or somewhere where it's really difficult to get to so the way that I like to uh, rig this is I'm going to rig the worm all the way up to about here instead of just putting it the worm here and then you know kind of so that you can put the head up here I want the head to come up the line so what I'll do is I'll rig this all the way to the bend of the hook and then I'll pull it through and when it comes up to the spot that usually holds the head of the worm I'm gonna pull it up there but I'm gonna pull it way up into onto the line and that's gonna I've got it up about an inch on the line and what that does it gives me a little better um, chance of getting that hook farther back in the worm and we'll, we're gonna rig this weedless and we'll text pose it so that it's totally weedless and straight and then I won't I won't use any weight at all or if I do use a weight about 12 inches in front of the worm if I need a little bit of weight I'll put a split shot on this and that is the rig that uh, I run for a worm and boy if you're used to using worms in the daytime compared to at night you'll find that as you're moving this thing through the vegetation it pops through or something when these big fish come up it's not going to be a tick 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 oh I thought I got a bite real real they're going to come up and they're going to nail these things so that's a, a big worm and I like black and blue flake at night those are the baits that I use what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull up here I'm going to put down my power poles and I'm going to explain uh, one of the techniques that I like to use and how I like to set up so give me a minute we'll get all set up for that I'm going to talk about one of my most productive uh, after dark techniques it's not the only one but it's the technique that that I use uh, that I prefer to use out here and it seems year after year it's a technique that catches me uh, most of the bigger fish that I catch out here and that is uh, fishing big wake baits big swim bait wake baits on the surface after dark so let's pretend that we're in an area right here we've got some flats up here but there's a nice deep water channel it drops off just outside of these tules, and we have a really great uh, wall of ve underwater vegetation so I'm thinking that after dark these big fish are going to come in they may not be up in the shallows but I know they're going to be right along that wall so what I'm going to do is try to heave this bait as far as I can within a foot or two of that wall and to do that I also want to have the boat as still as possible so if you have power poles and you're drifting with the wind you want to drop your power poles fish in front of the boat if you are go if if you uh, don't have power poles you can utilize your um, spot lock if you're in a kayak or some, something that you know you can you can get in tight and, and maybe have the tulies hold you in there you you want the boat to be as still as possible um, the other thing that I'll, I'll talk about before we get into the technique is this is a technique that has lots of qualifiers we talked about these qualifiers I am not um, out here to sell a bait a rod or a, a reel you need a dedicated swim bait rod I like a little bit of bend in the in the tip of this rod but I like a lot of power in the backbone so when I do hook a fish I can really try to move that fish you're gonna find that as you fish these big swim baits when these bigger fish come up and they hit them on the surface they a lot of times stay on the surface especially when you're really you know cranking on them and you're gonna get fish shaking heads and jumping and flopping around out there you can't see what's going on so you need that tip that's gonna be forgiving so that they can't uh, throw that bait so I got an 8 foot swim bait rod this is a 300 tranks 65 pound braid and it's tied directly to the bait and we have our boat positioned so one way or another it's fairly still so what I'm gonna do let me make this cast and we're gonna heave out as far as you can heave it out let me turn around and get this cast out here now that's not a super long cast this is just for demonstration usually I'm gonna to try to make a cast that's double that length but let's just say that bait has fallen within 
a foot or two of the vegetation line. I'm going to throw it out, let it sit for a minute, and then I'm going to slowly retrieve it. Start and stop. Start and stop. Start and stop. I might retrieve it for two feet and then let it stop. I may twitch it a time or two. But what this is allowing me to do is have the boat position in the right position, not moving. My bait's in the right position. I can work that bait all the way back to the boat. Now I'm going to pull this in and talk about why it's important to make a long cast. We'll just throw it out one more time. Okay. You see how that bait lands? You're not going to help that you're not going to be able to help that. You can't pitch this bait in and get a, little, a really light bait landing. When that bait hits, every big fish around that, probably for 30 or 40 feet, knows that that hit the water and there's something not right and they're gone. So I don't expect to get a bite right away. If I do, it's going to be that one big bass that's it's in the middle of the night, it's hungry, and somehow it's instincts overwhelm its brain and it just comes up and you know gives you that one shot in a million that doesn't happen very often so I let the bait sit out there and I start retrieving it slowly now if I make a hundred foot cast I'll have that thing in 20 or 30 feet before I think I will get a bite that's when I really slow down that's when it's important to have the boat stationary so that you can be uh, bringing that bait the whole time through productive water now if I if I've thrown out and made a good cast, I can work that thing all the way down the vegetation. So as I pull it in, it's just standard stuff. I'm just twitching it every now and then, letting it sit. Maybe I'll reel it slow. If I can hear that click after dark, click, 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 I'll stop it. Twitch it a little bit. Let it sit there for five or ten seconds. Start reeling again. Most of the time, it's either going to be as soon as it stops or as soon as it starts. So you want to have that cadence as much as you can throughout the cast in the middle of the cast. Once it gets close to the boat, they'll follow it for a long way and a lot of times they'll hit it right at the boat. The biggest fish that I ever hooked on the Delta was last summer. I was sitting down in a chair and I got that bait to about maybe 10 feet off of the tip of the rod and that's when that fish hook uh, hit man I set the hook on him the rod bent he was flapping around I uh, uh, got it right to the boat and uh, I lost the fish and here's another qualifier that we're gonna throw in this is a bonus tip you want to fish after dark with no lights at all dark period you're gonna have to cover up your um, uh, uh, direction indicator on your motor the little light on these uh, uh, Lowrance ghosts, that little blue light, that will blind you. I put all of that, uh, uh, I put a sock or something over that so there's no light. I have good night vision. And then I, uh, I'll wear a headlamp, and my headlamp is a motion sensing headlamp. When I got that big fish, I had him right here. I had my, my uh, net ready, the whole deal. I do this to get the light to go on, it won't come on for some reason. That's one of the qualifiers that I should have had in place to catch that fish. When I was doing this, for some reason it wasn't on, I didn't hit the right button, and I wasn't able to check off that qualifier. So what I did was I grabbed my net, and I tried to net the fish without seeing them. I thought I knew where the fish was, and I tried to net them, and I made a bad, bad pass at the net. It got kind of caught on the side of the net and as it flopped over the net I could see how big it was and I lost the fish but that's one of the qualifiers having a good headlamp in the evening a good qualifier and other qualifiers that I had in place I had the right rod I had fresh 65 pound braid I had good knots I had the right bait the right reel I made the right cast I was in the right place all of those are qualifiers which we talked about and there's hundreds of them uh, how hard I set the um, how hard I set the hook on it. All these things are qualifiers, but with that, um, it's going to give you some, a little bit of insight and information on, on coming out. And if you're really serious about getting these big fish, uh, fish after dark, 
and man you'll be surprised what happens out here and, and you're not going to catch every one of these fish that bite but you're going to be pleasantly surprised uh, by a fish sooner or later it may not happen in your first trip your second trip your third fish you're going to be catching fish after dark but when that one big fish comes up and he you know it's a whole different ball game when these i'll say nine ten plus pound fish come up and hit it's it's not you know they just come up and they grab these baits and when you set right that instant when you set and there is no give and the next thing you hear is a big roll that's when you're on to a, uh, a a big fish and you'll know it right away so anyhow i want to thank you guys for watching if you haven't subscribed make sure you subscribe hit the like button all that good stuff if you have any questions definitely uh send me a comment and i try to answer all the comments and questions that you guys have and uh, if you watch this video and you go out and you catch yourself a big big fish i want a picture of it i'll put it up on the report and we'll tell the story if it's over if it's a teener over 13 pounds, I want to get you on the boat and we'll do a video on how you caught that, that monster fish, that one in a lifetime fish. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys on the river. Good luck.